I'm here with John Burns. He is the conditioner of Armbro Ticket in this upcoming division of Jughead Action. But uh, John, before we talk about this one, we're going to go down memory lane a little bit to seven years ago. The stage was set much as it is today, 1993 Jughead. You walked away, the winning conditioner. It was a great record uh, performing <laughs> effort by your filly and that none other than Towner's image. Do you reminisce a little yourself when you get back to Delaware? Oh yeah, uh, I was not here when she won. Uh, but no, even still at home, you pull the tape out every once in a while and run it through. She was, she was good that day. There was, there just was nobody going to beat her that afternoon, you know. You have had a lot of success with pacing fillies. Is there anything you look for when you go to the sales for in particular? Uh, I look for like size, and I like a filly to look more on, the, more like a colt than I do like a filly, you know. Does Armbro Ticket fill that bill? Yeah, she fills that bill pretty good. She's a she's a good, strong filly, you know. Let's talk about her uh, successes so far. Uh, first, let's go back to her two-year-old season and how she's matured from then to this year. Well, uh, last year she was, you know, she wasn't great, but she done she done fair in Pennsylvania. You know, she qualified for the hundred thousand final, finished third in the final. Uh, she was staked to everything uh, this year as a three-year-old, but she, when she came back, she just didn't, uh, you know, she had no killer instinct to her. And it's only been of late uh, sending her to uh, the Meadows and the Poconos, and uh, Greg's done a great job with her. He's, uh, you know, he's raced her conservatively, and uh, he's made $50,000 with her, and uh, she just, like, I think she's at her best game. Our, our situation with coming here was, even though I felt she didn't belong here. Uh, she's in the Harrisburg sale, as I sell all my three-year-olds at the end of the year. And I, uh, John Fielding and I, we just thought it was cheap advertising, you know, to spend 4000 And, you know, she drew not a bad division, and hopefully she can get a hunk of it and maybe even qualify for the final. Well, wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Well, you talk about... Uh having a plan with your horses and selling them all at three and showcasing them a bit and also her being on top of her game do you have to manage your stable very carefully as well as be concerned with training the horses how much of it is stable management well i think in, in this day and age how you manage a horse is the most important thing i mean you just can't make every dance you know you can't go to every race there is you know and you, you try and pick your spots have her the best she can possibly be for a certain few races. You know, the idea of just racing them because the stake schedule says she's got a stake race. You know what I mean? You, tr you know, anymore you pick your spots and try to be in the spots where you, you feel your horse is the best. Well, stepping up to today's level of competition, you say she is on top of her game. She has post position five. What may help her play the role of spoiler over the favorite in this race or perhaps even get qualified for the final? I hope I'm not wrong, but I think the small track will pick her up. Uh, she's not, she's not a real gutsy mare at the end of a mile on a big track like up home on our seven eights, five eights. But I think, I think the way she paces a turn in that, I think, uh, I think the small track will help her. Since it was only seven years ago, and that seems like a short amount of time in many respects, has training changed a lot in the last seven years? No. No, I still do the same thing I done seven years ago, and uh, we're not doing too bad. Perhaps he'll put another winner on the track right here in Armbro Ticket. Good luck. Thank you very much. Back over to the infield.